So, what we learned in the previous part was uh, classification of common set controllers, mechanism of action and finally, we, talk, uh, we talked a little bit about accelerating admixtures for regular concrete and short treat. In this section, which is a shortened section, we will talk about retarding chemicals because retarding chemicals are functioning in a similar way as your super plasticizers or they are actually an effective or super plasticizers can also function as effective retarders. So, retarders are typically classified as organic or inorganic. Uh, organic retarders of course, include the same chemicals that are used as normal water reducers, your lignosulfonate, hydroxy carboxylic acid, carbohydrates, these are all regular retarders and fairly inexpensive. Uh, for instance, sugar or corn syrup, these are all excellent retarders. So, I talked about this earlier, right, that the truck driver keeps some sugar available to ensure that the concrete does not set in the truck when it is rejected from site and goes back, right. There are also more expensive formulations of retarders like borates, phosphate, zinc and copper compounds. Again, cost is high, solubility is not very high. So, we cannot make solutions that are as strong as the organic retarders that are typically used. And the advantage here obviously, is that you get a dual effect, you get not just retardation, but you also get slump retention or initial workability. In some instances, you want to really extend the workability for a very long time, okay. So, that is where you want to use phosphonates and phosphorus containing organic acids and salts, sometimes gluconic acid. These admixtures can be used for several reasons. I have put three reasons there. One is stabilization of wash water for concrete. This was an interesting application. What happens is after the concrete truck delivers the concrete, it comes back to the concrete plant, it needs to be washed out, right. All the concrete inside has to be washed out. But this is a high pH material, right? Concrete has a pH of 13. So, you cannot let that wash water come and mix with your ground water. Well, in an ideal situation, you should not do that, but we do that all the time. So, this example I came across in Switzerland when I used to work for Sika because Sika is based in Switzerland. So, I went there for a couple of weeks for training. So, I saw that they were collecting all their wash water in these large plastic drums and adding this extended set admixture into this water. So, what that did was, it prevented the setting of the cement completely for several days. All it did was ensure that it took long enough for the cement particles and the any fine aggregate particles that may be in the system to start settling to the bottom and the water which was remaining on the top could be reused either in new concrete or for washing purposes. So, that way they did not have to waste the water that they got from washing and the material that it collected at the bottom was simply settled, it did not set, it had just settled at the bottom and that could be simply removed and then discarded. So, that way they were able to reutilize this water because this is going to be a very important thing for us to do also because we do not want to waste all that water that goes into washing. If that can be collected and reused, this is a very efficient way of doing it. Stabilization of returned plastic concrete. I talked about sugar. Instead of sugar, you can also use these gluconates that are much more effective and they will keep the concrete workable for a long time. So, concrete truck arrives on site, it already has to wait for a long time before it can be used. By the time it gets to be used, the slump is not there. The engineer on site rejects the concrete, goes back. By the time it reaches the plant, concrete may have started setting. You do not want that to happen, obviously. So, you can stabilize and ensure that setting does not take place. But where does this concrete go finally? Anybody who has worked for concrete, concrete uh, RMC, no one has experience with RMC. People with LNT, have you ever rejected a truck? It is actually a very rare occurrence, people do not reject trucks easily, although they should be rejecting much more often. So, these trucks, they we do not know, right, what happens to this concrete later, okay. I am getting record, recorded, I am saying uh, probably some uh, some concrete manufacturers also be watching my lecture sometime, but still I am, uh, this is a this is a question that has always caused a lot of wonder because uh, I do not know what happens to this concrete. Now, ultimately it may get used up at a different site where similar concrete is actually required. By the time it reaches the other site, it may have started normally setting, right. Or sometimes they may go and dump in so called low lying areas, dump the concrete, right. God knows who classifies these low lying areas. The same thing with construction demolition waste. 
we take we fill up these trucks with more and more waste this gets taken out of the city and gets dumped in some low lying areas so where are these low lying areas nobody knows okay anyway so all this has to be thought about in a big way but when you have to transport concrete for very long distances i talked uh, previously that let's say you have to have concreting done on top of a hill and your your concrete plant cannot be located for several reasons close by then your travel time may be sometimes 3 to 4 hours or even more uh, there are documented uh, case studies where people had to travel 8 9 hours to deliver the concrete and they had a requirement of one day strength so here you retard but you also want the one day strength so there there is if you do some uh, uh, internet search you will find this compound called delvo from the company used to be which used to be called master builders earlier okay they had this product called delvo which could be used for this extended set retardation but it was formulated in such a way with other ingredients added to it that once the concrete was actually placed and compacted and finished it could then start the strength gain process quite rapidly so it was not just a retarder it had obviously some accelerating components in it so again i'm just giving some examples of retarding sugars like uh, your good retarders typically include glucose maltose lactose and cellulose and excellent retarders could be sucrose and raffinose okay you you have done some understanding of this sugar molecule in your basic sciences back in probably 9th or 10th standard right so i've just given you the structure of sucrose and maltose here so uh, these compounds obviously are again of the aromatic type right and uh, they have very varied effects on the way that they can act so when you add glucose into your cementitious system what you are again doing is extending your dormant period right all setting accelerators sh shorten the dormant period all setting retarders extend the dormant period it may also turn out that the total the actual peak heat that is liberated in your system may also start getting reduced as you add more and more of the retarder because the rate of this is all rate of heat evolution calories per gram per hour right so the rate at which heat is evolved is represented by that peak it doesn't mean the total heat evolved total heat evolved will depend on how much reaction is actually taking place it's just happening slowly so if you plot the total heat that is evolved let's say in joules per gram or calories per gram versus time it will slowly keep getting built up let's say if that is for normal concrete for retarded concrete it may have a much more gentler slope but ultimately it may reach the same level as long as the hydration continues to the same extent right so that's the total heat development but the peak heat rate may reduce when you add more and more retarder like glucose in this case okay now sucrose is quite interesting because effect of sucrose can be a little bit of a confusing one sucrose is a very good retarder no doubt but what happens is if you have lime in your system calcium hydroxide right if you have calcium hydroxide in your system you tend to lose effectiveness of the sucrose as a retarder okay sucrose has an affinity for portlandite or calcium hydroxide than for other phases and it does not really express itself in the same level of retardation later so with sucrose with different levels of calcium hydroxide you are seeing that the with increase in calcium hydroxide levels the efficiency of retardation of sucrose is dropping now this doesn't mean that for normal cement sucrose will cease to be a good retarder just because there's enough calcium hydroxide but between cements which are likely to generate different levels of calcium hydroxide in the system you may have a different efficiency of the sucrose happening okay so you have to look at this chemistry carefully before you actually arrive at the right dosage to be used in your system now as i was earlier saying super plasticizers which envelop the cement particles prevent hydration from happening and the extend extension of this to a longer period of time let's say by polycarboxylates will further retard the hydration of the cement so super plasticizers can have an impact on the retardation of cement hydration also so there is an example again of the heat curve no so the study of the heat curve is often a very good example 
to determine the re relative rates of reactivity or kinetics of a reaction. So, we will see later that this heat studies are also used extensively in understanding the impact of mineral admixtures like fly ash or slag or calcined clay for instance. Okay. So, this is for cement mortar what you see is with different forms of super plasticizers there is a minor shift in the time at which the peak occurs. Okay. There is a minor increase in your dormant period, but interestingly the peak heat rate is higher when the super plasticizers are being used. Why do you think that happens? Why is the peak re heat rate higher? What is that saying? You have caused an increase in your dormant period that is retarding your concrete, but the peak heat rate that means the rate at which the reactions are happening are much higher once the reactions start happening. Why is that? Please remember now particles in the presence of superplasticizer are nicely dispersed. So, each and every particle now has access to water, but ideally right, it is not going to be happening in practical sense, but ideally each and every particle has more access to water. So, the hydration or rapid dissolution of the C 3 S can happen quite significantly when you have superplasticizers. that is why the heat rate is actually going up, but the time at which this heat rate actually happens is extended. Okay. So, uh, at different temperatures the relative effect of these super plus sizes could be quite different. For instance, hydroxy carboxylic acid or hydroxylic acid in at 30 degrees it is causing a retardation of 4 hours and 57 minutes, at 40 it is only 1 hour and 15 minutes. Okay. Lignin is causing about 2 hours and 20 minutes retardation of initial set at 30 degrees, but at 40 degrees you are having a major reduction in this time. Okay. So, what this goes to show is when you start using these retarders, they may not have the same effectiveness at different temperatures. So, when you plan projects, you need to be aware of these issues, right. Luckily for us, obviously, we know what are the range of temperatures happening within different segments of the project. So, we can plan appropriately to use the retarders, the right kind of retarders at the right dosages. Okay, so, we come back again to this mechanism as I said accelerators and retarders affect the rate at which dissolution of cementitious phases happens. Okay. So, again the uh, mechanism may again depend on adsorption. Right. So, these molecules are getting adsorbed onto the cement surface and preventing the rate at which they are dissolving in the solution. So, what is presented here is the fraction of C 3 S dissolved versus time for no admixture case and this is the admixture polyacrylate 1, polyacrylate 2. So, there are two different polyacrylates that are used in the system. 1.5 milligram of C 3 S is taken in a diluted solution right of li uh, lime saturated. Why is it lime saturated? Because we do not want any leaching. If you put cement in water, calcium will start leaching into the water. Okay. When you use a lime saturated solution, you prevent that leaching. So, all you are seeing is what is the extent of calcium dissolving in the system just because of the effect of the hydration process, not because of the leaching process. Okay. This leads us to one another interesting question. In laboratories, you take concrete cubes and put it in water, right? store it in water, but there is also another method of storage. You can store it in a room where the humidity is controlled to 100 percent and you spray moisture. So, there is a difference here when you store it in water, the calcium bearing species are leaching out, even the alkalis in the system <coughs> are leaching out into the water. This thing does not happen when you start spraying the moisture. Okay. Similarly here, if you had chosen a condition in which the C 3 S is simply put in water, leaching of calcium may actually happen rather than the dissolution leading to hydration. So, here that is why lime saturated solution has been used in the presence of two carboxylated admixtures. So, you can see very clearly that the fraction of C 3 S dissolving is much lower at the initial time periods of 0 to 30 minutes. Okay. So, because of this adsorption and uh, stabilization of the polymer molecule adsorption on top of the cement particles, it is preventing calcium from dissolving. Now, in some applications we want to give a texture to the concrete surface. right? we want to have an exposed aggregate surface 
just for aesthetic purposes. In such cases, we can use what are called surface retarders. After the concrete has been placed and finished, after a few uh, minutes of the finishing of the concrete, we can spray these surface retarders. Now, what happens when you spray the surface retarders is only the surface of the concrete, the cement does not set. So, after a certain period of time, when the concrete inside has already set, but the surface is not set, all you do is take a water jet, right, and remove the cement paste from the surface. So, that leaves us with textures like this, where aggregate can be exposed, it gives a nice aesthetic appearance. That is called a surface retarder. It is not a retarder for the entire concrete, but only for the surface of the concrete. Okay, so, this was a short uh, segment because much of admixture chemistry is similar to what we talked about in water reducers action. So, that is what these chemicals also are doing. They are again long chain chemicals that are acting by adsorption and preventing dissolution of your calcium bearing species. So, several papers were referred for the preparation of this uh, segment. So, I suggest that if you are interested further to know about this, you can actually look at the uh, papers in more detail, right. We will stop with that today. Uh, I also want you to uh, do a self study on the, uh, the uh, standards ASTM C 494 and IS 9, 9103, okay. These are the two standards. ASTM standard and IS standard. Just take a look at what these standards talk about in terms of, uh, these standards are primarily for the use of uh, wa uh, water reducing and set regulating chemicals, accelerators and retarders. So, just try to see the, uh, the way in which they define the effectiveness of these materials, how they should be tested, how they should be certified and how they should be used, okay. ASTM C 494, 494 and IS 9103. 